it is important to recognize that due to convenience, we have collapsed our social lives, our work lives, and our home lives into one place, and we've focused on external outcomes and external accomplishments for success to the detriment of our own health and well being. And it's perfectly normal. Growing up, going through the educational system, especially here in the US, and into your career, you were praised for being independent and setting ambitious goals and reaching them on your own. And at one point, you learned that being fiercely independent and with maxed out self-sufficiency and self-reliance, you were rewarded. Praise from parents and teachers. And then in your career, that led to success. That led to promotion by you working harder than everyone and choosing isolation as a path to external accomplishment. But over time, by making that choice habitual and making that choice of isolation your comfort zone, you've actually set yourself up for poor health outcomes, right, Michael? AJ, you were talking about uh, Vivek Murthy, the former US Surgeon General, uh, just a few minutes ago. And he, in his book Together, he wrote, he says that loneliness has become a silent epidemic and it has become, get this, one of the top reasons for medical appointments as well as emergency room visits. Loneliness is one of the main reasons for this, both in the US and the UK, by the way. So approximately, he writes that approximately 20% of emergency room visits are related to, to loneliness. Uh, patients show up with symptoms that include panic attacks, dizziness, severe emotional distress, heightened physical pain, and so on. 20% of emergency room visits. Uh, Nathan Tate and Holt, Lundstedt, uh, Baker, Harris, Stevenson, a lot more have coined the term loneliness is the new smoking. Um, this is you know, backed up by uh, quite a few researchers. And it's the new smoking due to the fact that loneliness is as dangerous to our health as smoking 15 cigarettes per day or daily alcohol abuse, not use, but abuse. So of course, not, loneliness is not going to give you lung cancer or it's not gonna kill your, your liver, but it can shorten your lifespan uh, just the same way as chronic drinking and smoking does. Moving on, uh, Chakyopo, <laughs> apologies, dear gentleman, for not being able to pronounce your name uh, the right way. He and his uh, colleagues Fowler and Christakis write that loneliness, when it's chronic, has been linked to heightened risk of heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, increased mental health problems, including depression, anxiety, and there's also inflammation, there's immune and autoimmune problems. And before I go on, just let me remind you that we're talking about loneliness here, right? I'm not talking about like chronic drug abuse. I'm talking about loneliness, inflammation, immune and autoimmune problems, higher risk of suicide, and higher risk of premature mortality. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, but trust me, uh, I spend quite some time going through studies and this is just the tip of the iceberg. And we've seen it in our clients. You don't get to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day by chiefing down all 20. You start with the choice of smoking one and then it's two. And that's exactly how loneliness starts. You put off going out one weekend. You put off hanging out with friends. You put off going out to that third place because work is more important and I got to get this promotion and I got to save this amount of money to make sure that I can buy that house or buy that fancy watch or that car. And we see this with our clients that you look at a period of time and all of a sudden you've gone three months without actually investing in building and strengthening relationships. You've gone six months without actually going out and meeting new people. And as that world and that sphere of influence closes, you start to feel the heightened stress, the heightened fear, the heightened anxiety that chasing performance, trophies, achievements creates. We're human beings, right? We're not made to be, we're not wired biologically to be lone wolves. We're, we're pack animals, we're herd animals. We feel best and have the best overall being when we have acceptance approval and attention from those around us and vice versa. The people around us need that from us in order to feel good and safe in our relationships.